Hi, and welcome to Catherine Figures. I'm your host, Caitlin, and today we are going to be reviewing Redneck Issue 1. So, first off, this is created by the same team that is currently working on God Country, so you know it's going to be fantastic. So, this is all about a family of vampires. So, as we open on into the comic, we get to see... An elderly vampire, well, elderly, he's not really elderly, but he's older. An older gentleman vampire is discussing life as immortal, as an immortal. And he's basically saying that when you're an immortal, you get to see everything happen. You get to see wars, you get to see kings and queens fall and rise. You get to see everything and you just kind of exist. And after a while, it really doesn't matter which side you're possibly on. So, ultimately, we get to meet this new family, which, you know, just your average, ordinary vampire family living out in the country, of course. They're cool. They're cool. So, <laughs> continuing on, we get to find out that several of the different members the bat of this vampire family have different abilities, like this little girl. She has the ability to read minds. I, I kind of like her so far. So when they're diving into that, we get to see a number of younger vampires. They are hoping to go out in the town and have some fun. They just, they want to go out, they want to live, you know, they're, they're young vampires. They want to cause some trouble. They want to, you know, paint the town blood red, I guess. <laughs> So their father is telling them that they're not going into town, they're staying put, they're going to be good, and ultimately, they're leaving anyway. It's Christmas Eve, they want to go out, they want to have fun. So Uncle Bartlett, aka the vampire that we met earlier, who was discussing all about life as an immortal, he's trying to talk down his brother JV. And he's trying to tell them that, you know, they're good boys. They're good boys. They just want to go out. They just want to have a little bit of fun. Just cause a little bit of trouble. They're not going to kill anyone. And the two men disagree about this. They disagree about the times and what exactly is going to happen. So ultimately, the father's just concerned that his sons are going to go too far. So Bart, Uncle Bartlett goes after them in order to bring them back home. Either that or to go hang out with them with them at the local strip club. You know, whichever. Whichever. So nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. You know, he's just gonna hang out with them. So he walks into town like he owns the place and we get to see at the local strip club he is asking about his nephews. And he's wondering, where are they? And he, I love it. He walks up to the bartender and he's saying, hey, bartender, I'm looking for three boys. And the guy says, you're in the wrong place. And ultimately he says, hilarious. But my nephews came in here a while ago and he describes the boys and tells them that he just wants to keep them out of trouble. And he finds out that there's something going on outside. And he knows the boys have something to do with it. So apparently one of the boys got a little handsy with a girl who was a stripper who is apparently also in a relationship with one of these bikers. And apparently that's not a good thing. So Uncle Bartlett kicks down two metal doors and tells these guys to back the fuck off. Which, yeah, he, he, he's, he's a little drunk, so he's kind of wobbling around. And, you know, they're, they're pulling out knives and guns, and they're telling him to stay out of this. And he's like, what, do you think you're bulletproof or something? And he just lights a cigarette. And he's saying, could be, don't know, never been shot. And he says, you want to find out? And I love his fangs right there. I love it. So... We don't actually get to see this rumble happen, 
because another man steps out of the shadows and he calls the goons off. And that is when we get to meet Mr. Landry. So we find out a little bit about the hate between the Landrys and the Bowmans. We don't really know why they hate each other, but apparently it has been going back some time. This is a generation's issue between them. And Bartlett doesn't want this to go farther. He doesn't want this to escalate any worse than it needs to be. So he's calling the boys off and he's trying to leave. And that's when the land, when the Landry gentleman opens up his big mouth and he tells them that uh, those, be those boys better be careful or one of these days they'll wake up in ashes. And they says, and you, Mr. Bowman, you and those boys will burn just like their mother. So him saying that stops Bartlett in his tracks and he turns and you get to see that each of them, each of the families has been waiting for the other one to make the last stupid move to finally push it over the level into actual war between the two families. But they've never gone that far until Landry opened up his big fat mouth tonight. Mm. As far as he's concerned, the first shot has been taken. So we get to see a, a very stern face from him. And the next day, Christmas morning, Christmas day, Bartlett is covered in blood and he's on his porch and the sun's rising. And of course he's getting burned, you know, because he doesn't sparkle like Twilight vampires. He's a real vampire. Get it. <laughs> he, burns. he burns in the sun. So he's thinking, what happened? What did I miss? And JV is shaking him and he's asking him what he did. What did he do? What on earth did he do? And he's not understanding. He's like, what's going on? What is? And then we get to see a couple of the boys saying, Uncle Bartlett, did you kill? And saying, now they'll all come. Now all of them will come. And even the little girl who can apparently read minds, and I'm not sure exactly the full extent of her powers yet, but she's saying that they're going to be hunted, that things are going to get so much worse, and she's told to, to calm down. So JV throws Bartlett out in the yard, and he asks him what he did, and that's when the true horror hits you, when he looks up towards the tree, and you get to see Slap, who was one of the members of their family, strung up in the tree, burning in the sun. And JV orders him to get him down, to get his son down. So he's told, Slap's dead, cattle's gone, and come nightfall, them boys is going to kill every single man, woman, and child in that town. You know, I can't stop him. And he tells him to get his son out of that tree. Because they need to talk. So, pretty rough image in the comic when he shoots him down. So, I really enjoyed this first issue of Redneck. I was really excited. I loved a bunch of the pre-released artwork. I cannot wait to see what comes out of this. This, for me, is kind of filling the void of True Blood in a way. Like It, it feels very reminiscent of the grittier episodes in the first season, like the, the first few episodes you know, before it got all uh, romantic-y, shall we say. That could be up to a whole new level. <laughs> but um, I loved this comic. I loved a bunch of the little images that they'd thrown in there, like the Bloodweiser that was a part of it, and all of the different references to different things that were hidden among it. I loved 
when uh, they focused on his fangs opening up the beer bottle. And I loved the fact that they showed the brute strength of these vampires. In fact, they do burn. They do have issues and they do have weaknesses. So I'm really excited to see what's going to come out of this moving forward. I love the team that is currently working on it. It looks fantastic. I'm definitely going to be picking it up and keeping it on my pull list moving forward. So yeah, give me a like if you like this video, comment below and tell me whether or not you picked up Redneck issue one and if you enjoyed it as much as I did. Subscribe to my channel for more comic book content or check out any of the older videos I have up for offer here on Cat Run Figures. And until next time, I'm your host, Caitlin. Bye.